Hi, I'm Doug Rost, and today, working on my RT, I'm going to replace the Hall sensor, uh, also called the HES, the Hall Effect sensor. And what happened is the bike just crapped out on me the last week. Um, it's typical that this happens around 70,000 miles, and the symptoms are for me, I was just riding along and it had started to surge and sputter and stop like I'd be running out of gas or the electrical failed. Uh, the volts were showing over 13 volts. I was fine with power to the battery, but it wouldn't go. I got it to start again and ride for a little bit, find a place to pull off, died again, and that was it. It would turn over, but it wouldn't start. Another telltale sign is the tachometer needle started bouncing. So I knew it was the, the HES. So I ordered a new one and essentially what the HES is is a metal plate that has the two Hall Effect sensors mounted on it. And this mounts behind the drive pulley the alternator. And what this does is it detects the top dead center and 180 degrees on the crankshaft and when it senses these positions it sends a signal to the Motronic unit which tells the coils to file the appropriate spark plug and to squirt an appropriate amount of fuel through the injectors. Uh, the Motronic is also of course getting information on you know oxygen sensor and battery voltage and all that. Now it's typically not the sensors themselves that go bad it's the wiring. It's a known problem that there was an inferior grade housing to this wiring and over time as heat builds up it deteriorates the housing, it cracks and it shorts it out. This one is a Bosch. From what I know there's three places you can get them. Your dealership for about 350 bucks. This is from Beamer, Beamer Boneyard I want to say about 230, 240. Or there's a guy I found if you've got the time that you can take yours off, send it to him, and for about a hundred bucks, he'll rewire it and send it back to you with a lifetime warranty. I'll, I'll get his information up. So, bike is dead in the water until we fix this. What does that entail? Of course, all the Tupperware has to come off, the panels have to come off, we have to take the tank off and dive into there. We're going to need to get the bike to top dead center and put a pin in to lock it there and go to town. Let's start to work. Tupperware is off so to take the gas tank off first we're going to get some of the gas out of there. We've got two gas clamps on the two hoses. We've got a rag underneath here, catch some of that spillage. And we've got two of these band clamps that we want to release. Yeah. Loop your finger behind it. Take some pliers, use your thumb as a lever, and gently, mm -hmm. kind of a pain, maybe get the, f there we go. Okay. Make sure you're holding the tubes for the fuel rail in place. You're not going to want to be cranking on those.
Oh, this one's being a bugger. There we go. All right, while that's draining, we can release this bolt. There's a nut on the back, so make sure you get your finger on it. And I dropped it. And then you've got your electrical. You don't normally have to use a screwdriver, but mine's got a broken tab. Before you take the gas tank off, you do have to take the glove box off. So you've got two bolts here, one bolt here, and then inside on this little shelf, right about here there is a capped nut that also comes off that. We've drained some of the gas out, we've disconnected the electrical, we've taken the mounting bolt out, we've got two breather hoses here, we're going to disconnect those, we've taken the glove box off the other side, so now it's just a matter of lifting this up in the back and pulling it backwards, and off comes the tank. We want the motor to be a top dead center, so we're going to take the uh, spark plugs out just to make it a little easier to turn the engine over. Getting the bike to top dead center requires removing this plug in this little viewport here. which can sometimes be a booger. That way you can look in there and as you're spinning the engine around you can find the OT. I did another video about this modification I made and even though we are going to have to take this cover off I just thought I've got the opportunity I'll show you again. Uh, I've got another video like I said that shows you how to drill this hole out and replace it with an electrical cap which then allows you to get right there to turn the engine and remember you're always going to want to turn it clockwise and spin the crank around so that you can find OT
All right, we've got the engine at top dead center with the OT mark uh, in the viewport, but we still need to lock it in place. And uh, you can buy a BMW part, or I made this out of, I believe, a four inch U-bolt, cut it off, chamfered the edge. And above, use this as a pointer, this is your starter, and above that you're gonna see a recess about the size of your finger. And this is gonna go in there, there's a hole in there, it may have a plug cap on it. I don't believe mine does. And this is gonna get in there, and it's going to lock in the crank so that it is in position. You may have to jiggle it a little bit to find that hole. Just don't go backwards, you miss it. Start over again. There we go. All right, there. So now that's seated in there and now I cannot turn the crank. It is locked at top dead center. Beauty. Next, we're going to disconnect the hall sensor, which is, of course, zip tied to the frame right here by the alternator. And it's kind of in this little protective, protective shroud. All right, so from the feel point. of it, there's two clamps on either side that need to be butterflied out a little. Don't break them. Can't even see. Uh. All right. Got that disconnected. That's where the new one will plug right in. Um, I would, uh, I'm going to probably take this and um, send it in and have it rewired just to have a spare, turn and sell it, whatever. It's not a matter of uh, when these are going to fail. No, take that back. It's not a matter of if they're going to fail. These are going to fail. If you're around the 70,000 mile mark, changers. You do not want to become stranded out on the road, have to wait for this part to be ordered in. If it's a weekend, now you've got extra food, extra lodging, you could be stranded for a week. Get it done before it fails. You will not have any indication that it's going to fail. It will just go. We've taken the cover off. And I know this isn't the best vantage point, but we've got a big piece of suspension in the way. Uh, we need to take the lower pulley off. So first we're going to slacken the alternator belt and then remove that. So what you can't see is up here there are a couple mounting bolts for the alternator. And we're going to loosen those so that we can get some slack. And then there's one all the way up at the top, right behind the spring, the front shock. There. All right, so that drops down. If you haven't changed your belt in a while, now's the time to do it. Okay. Now we've got Again, you can't really see it. I'll try to point to it with the flashlight, but right up here, there is a bolt 
that is holding on the wire from the HES. So we're just going to slacken that in order to pull that wire out from behind that little hold down. Just enough to free that up. All right, now we're going to take this pulley off. Go back to our 16 mil. And this is why we locked the crank in place so that we can turn this. And there is the booger. Before we took the old one out, we made a registration mark on the body here. And that would be in the event that you're going to send that out to be rewired and reinstall the same one. In this case, we put in a new one, so we just took out these three bolts, pulled the wiring out, put the new one back in. But we're going to have to set the timing now and that's going to be done by just loosely putting this in because this is going to rotate some on these elongated slots and that's what's going to adjust the timing. But these are a little loose we're going to install the pulley and the washer and bolt and very very important is there's a little notch on this pulley and that needs to sit in this cutout in the crank and it is this ring here that's going to go in between the two hull sensor pickups I put a little notch on the outside of it just so I could better line it up. There. And this will get tightened down to 50 Newton meters. Now that we've got the pulley installed, we can set the hall sensor to top dead center. To do that, we're going to use this device that I made off of plans found online, which I will post. Very easy to do. How this works is we're plugging this into the hall sensor wiring harness. It's going to give us a couple lights, and we're going to slowly rotate the hall sensor until the top dead center light goes out, just as it goes out. At that point we can tighten those three bolts down and that's going to lock the sensor into the right location. We can disconnect this, hook the sensor into the wiring harness on the bike. We're good to go. Put it all back together. Okay. So here's our controller. And with the mounting bolts of the hall sensor loose and the pulley on, I'm taking just a socket with a Allen on it so that I can put it in that center hole give me something to kind of to grab and I'm very slowly pulling it till I get my top dead center light to come on and then that's where we know we can tighten it down 
And that's it. Very simple, but very, very important. Like I said, it's pretty easy to make this and it costs probably 15, 20 bucks in parts at Radio Shack. All the parts are listed that need to be purchased on the instructions. And I just want to mention that this is done by uh, Dana Hager put this together and huge thanks to him for all the detail he put into coming up with this. He even did some cutouts so you can cut out and glue on there so you know how everything is supposed to connect. We've got the hall sensor installed and the timing is adjusted so we'll put the alternator belt back together. We're going to loop that on. Then there is a gear that is behind this nut that we're going to put our torque wrench in. Set to 8 newton meters and not tightening we're going to loosen it because it's the reverse side of that bolt it will raise the alternator and when it is raised as the torque wrench clicks that's when we're going to tighten these down and that's how you set the belt tension so once we get this up to eight newton meters. We're gonna tighten that down and tighten down the others and then we'll torque them. So it takes a uh, what is this? It takes a six Allen driver on the back side here, and remember, put your torque wrench uh, to loosen, not to tighten, because you're on the back side of the bolt. So it's the opposite, and that is a gear that will raise the alternator, and then you lock it down, and you're set. So we're just about finished. We've got the front end put back together with the alternator cover back on. We have the alternator belt adjusted properly. The hall sensor is wired in and zip tied back in place. We've got the spark plugs put back in, the spark wires and the covers. Then we just put the gas tank on and fire this up. Remember, do not try to tackle this without using some kind of sensor gauge to set your timing you have to have that hall sensor dialed in because that's telling them the engine when to fire. As for the old hall sensor, send it in, have it rewired, maybe I'll just even rewire it myself. Hope this video helped you out.